Hey there, welcome back to episode 2 guys, and today we are going to um, continue where we left off, doing some early science gathering flights and uh, start some, some more contract work. Uh, we've done most of the local biomes around here, at least for the science experiments we already have. What I'd like to do, uh, as, as darkness starts to fall upon the KSC here, I'd like to do one more mission and try to get uh, over here to the mountains or, or just shy of the mountains and the highlands. Uh, I think we can, I think we should be able to, uh, to get one more set of signs there before we jump back into the contracts and do things like escape the atmosphere. So let's go back into the VAB and, and see if we can build a, a quick ship to get us over to the highlands or, or even in, into the mountain area. All right, so we will have to make an adjustment off the, the ship that we have been using because uh, one SRB is definitely not going to get us there. So let's, uh, let's pull this off and we do have uh, some small fuel tanks so we should be able to stack two or three of these and then go with our liquid fuel engine that we have. Coupler. And maybe just a flea, just to give us a, a little bit of boost and a little bit of speed off the launch pad to get us started. I think uh, I think we might be able to give that a whirl. So we still have our science experiments. However, we need to add back the thermometers and we'll want two of them one uh, one while we land and one while we're above uh, whichever of those two biomes we make it to whether we whether we land in the highlands or make it all the way into the mountains uh, that's still to be determined all right so let's uh Let's give this a try, although obviously I want to switch up that staging here a little bit. Alright. Alright guys, well it's getting dark here, so let's get this launch underway. Uh, what we want to do is go kind of northwest so that we can aim for these, uh, these closest mountain peaks here. They're the shortest distance to the, to the KSC and there's some highlands right in front of it so we'll try to get uh, headed over that direction and see if the three fuel tanks is enough to get us there so SAS on, throttle up and launch. Now we'll want to do some steering adjustments while we still have the SRB Careful, we don't put too much pressure on the on the ship, and we will definitely lose control if we're not careful. All right, so we've expended all of our fuel. However, we did get a a fairly good launch. I think we will find ourselves definitely over the uh, over the highlands and potentially even make it to the to the mountains so watch our altitude once we get down under 3000 meters we'll deploy so as you can see from our crew report we uh, we're definitely over the highlands, so we'll observe a mystery goo. We'll log our temperature, and we lost our engine, but uh, that is that's quite all right. Let's get a materials bay observation while we're landed, and of course we can get our other mystery goo that and our 
other temperature. Carbon Highlands, all good stuff. Now we'll follow our usual routine here. We'll we'll EVA Jeb. We'll do a EVA report. And I did forget to uh, kind of put the ship down on its side. But that should that should be okay. Um, worst case is we'll just have to recover two two separate two separate recoveries if we have to disembark Jeb again to take an EVA report on the ground. But uh, first things first, let's get our other crew report and see if we have. No, we don't have nearly enough uh, nearly enough torque. I can wobble it, but does oh wait now maybe we're gonna get it. Beautiful. There we go. So we'll EVA again. We'll get another EVA report while we're on the ground, and we're off to the races. Let's see what this little trip gained us in terms of science. So 31, so that's a, that's a reasonable return for that quick trip. I don't think we need to bother um, taking another, another crack here to get to the mountains. It's fairly difficult at this point to, to land right on the mountains. Um, so maybe it's time to go look at mission control. And plan out which contracts we want to uh, we want to take here next. So as we said earlier in the first episode, this this Mark 16 parachute one seems like a fairly straightforward, even though it's a two star, which would indicate it's a little more complicated. I think actually this one will be easy. So let's go ahead and accept that. And we need one more. We need one more. Haul the flea. Yeah, I think I think that's probably probably doable as well. So why don't we take that one? That'll max out our our two active contracts that we can have at this point. But a single launch, we should be able to get. Uh, we should be able to get both these. So let's uh, let's give it a whirl. All right, so we're gonna have to change up our rocket substantially here. And what was it? Oh yeah, it was the flea. So I think we'll get rid of the science experiments for the moment. And of course it was the Mark 16 that we needed to haul. Uh, there we go. We're gonna want a we're gonna want a decoupler. And in this configuration, which is pretty light, I think if we had the hammer underneath. Might, uh, that might just do the trick. Now, I would be concerned though that um, because this is a quite a light, light craft, um, we might have too much fuel in the first stage. So let me just back that off a little bit. I don't know what it should be. Somewhere around there. And uh, well, let's give it a go and see what happens. And again, we're getting a nice, uh, nice sunset here at the KSC. Uh, maybe the last, maybe the last launch will do as darkness sets. Uh, we can always, uh, we can always warp around to the morning uh, and pick it up again from there. But for now, I think we'll be okay. So let's turn on SAS. And 
So there's the flea. There is the Mark 16. So let's keep this window open and see uh, and see what happens as we as we go. And I don't actually think I want the flea to ignite right away. We'll see. So we're going too fast. Oh, so we got we got the Hall of the Flea, and we got the Mark 16. Oh, that's uh, that's perfect. So here we go. Contract complete. Contract complete. And uh, some altitude records and some speed records as well. Beautiful. So we're just topping out here now at uh, at 11,000 meters, and we've got too much weight to uh, to bring back with us. So let's let's get some distance here from the KSC as well. shape to deploy our chutes. So I'm going to uh, time accelerate here through the through the rest of the landing. Splash down. Perfect. Okay, so we are gathering, uh, gathering some funds here. Uh, of course, we just successfully completed uh, two more, our two haul contracts, and we managed to do it with in the uh, in one launch, which was uh, which was good. Because that saves us uh, that saves us funds. If we would have had to take two cracks at it, of course, that would have cost us more money to uh, to do that second launch with the second set of parts. So uh, it's nice that we managed to get those both. And I think we are definitely ready um, to escape the atmosphere. We've got uh, we've got some SRBs. We've got the the swivel liquid fuel engine and we've got some fuel tanks so uh, you know escaping the atmosphere uh, should be fairly easy at this point orbiting Kerbin you know also doable but a little trickier especially since we haven't uh, upgraded any of the facilities yet and with the small fuel tank you're going your part counts gonna go up higher to get enough uh, to get enough fuel in so um, maybe what we'll do Geez, I was I was about to click escape the atmosphere, but there's actually a couple tests here that we can do landed at curb and, and I have an idea of a little bit of a of a cheesy way that we might be able to uh, we might be able to satisfy both of these. So let me let me check those both off. So we're going to do two contracts where you test and what that means is you you either activate the part through the staging sequence like it says here or in some cases you uh, in some cases you hit the test there you go run test uh, option when you right click the part I'm thinking if we do something tricky just get a couple feet off the ground and let the uh, let the ship fall right back to the ground right away. But 
that may be able to that may be able to get us what we need. So let's uh, which two parts were those again? The 2.5 heat shield and the Rocco Max decoupler. All right, so the heat shield is going to be in aerodynamics. and the decoupler so I'm going to turn this over turn this over there we go looks uh, <laughs> looks a little bit awkward but it should do the trick now the other thing I want to do because when we when we actually execute this decoupler um, which reminds me, I need to change that staging. It's going to probably shoot straight up in the air, and there's a potential it could come straight back down and crush uh, Jeb in the uh, in the command pod here. So we're going to use the the rotate gizmo just to create enough of an offset. Whoops! And I have my snap to angle on, so I'll turn that off just to create enough of an offset that it that it shoots off to the side and won't come straight back down on the ship. So, odd as that may look, uh, and this might not work, but uh, let's give it a try. And it's dark out. I forgot we were going to maybe accelerate to the next morning. That's all right. I would say... Here goes nothing. So I turned my my thrust down as you saw when we were in the VAB and we've just run out of fuel. Now we didn't actually it doesn't look like we actually took off uh, left the launch pad at all. So I don't know that this is actually going to work. Well, it does say we're landed. So, if we then run the test, we've satisfied the heat shield test, and we can now execute the decoupler through the staging. And now we've successfully executed the decoupler test, which should be reflected here. Beautiful. And uh, it actually didn't fly up in the air and come back down so that was good no risk to uh, no risk to Jebediah so let's go see what we're up to now 223,000 so uh, so that was a worthwhile trip now let's uh, warp to the next morning there we go beautiful back into back into mission control and again, Escape the Atmosphere continues to be the one I got my eye on, but let's look at the replacement contracts that just got loaded here. So we have a bunch of observational surveys still. That's uh, that's going to be very tricky until we actually start launching our, our aircraft. Haul that, haul that. Test the thumper in a suborbital. Yeah, I would say the obvious candidate here, and something that's going to get us another 50,000 uh, funds, is going to be Escape the Atmosphere. And the other thing is, we can take some science with us, because we haven't done any science observations in either the up, upper atmosphere, or... Of course, if we escape the atmosphere, we'll be in space, so in, in low orbit. So we should have a good opportunity to gather some science in addition to this, uh, to this one contract that we do. So let's accept that, and let's see what we'd have to do to build the ship to accomplish uh, escaping the atmosphere. Alright, so let's get rid of this silliness. Um, so if we st 
start our first stage with the hammer. How many... How many fuel tanks are we going to need for our swivel engine to carry us past 70,000 meters? That is the question. So I think what, what I'd like to do is try four. And of course we're going to need a decoupler for our hammer. What I'm wondering is whether we should try to haul a science junior. Um, yeah, what the hell. Let's take a science junior with us. Now I'm not going to be able to EVA and take the science report out. So the question is... Can I maybe transmit the data? And that way I can get... No, that's not going to work because I would need to have a scientist to, to reset that experiment. So let's just go with a couple mystery goos and a couple thermometers. Mark 16 back. Actually, we already know that's not going to be enough parachutes to save our swivel engine. Well, if we land in the water, it might be. So, let's, uh, let's give this a whirl and see what happens. So again, guys, we have to get to 70,000. Actually, you know what? I'm, you know what I'm missing? I think I'm missing, I'm missing a drogue shoot. So let's go back to the vehicle assembly. And I'm wondering, it might be worthwhile take this guy, leave him there, but break the symmetry. And then that way, I can put the, uh, the Mark 12 drogue chute. Uh, what I'm wondering about here, of course, is we're going, uh, we're going to escape the atmosphere. We're going to do a suborbital trajectory. And that could mean we'll be, we'll be coming in uh, at a good enough speed and I don't have enough fuel here in this configuration to uh, to do much horizontal distance. So I'm pretty much going to go, you know, not straight up, but relatively straight up. And um, with the new atmosphere and drag models, uh, I think uh, we could we could be at risk of not being able to deploy our regular shoots in time. So that's why I, I felt it was important to switch to uh, to have a drogue shoot on here. Because they can deploy at higher speeds and then quickly that will bring the, the ship down uh, down in speed to be able to deploy our regular shoots. So again, the other thing we'll want to do related to that is move the drogue shoot to the other staging, an earlier stage. There we go. All right. Say yes. Maximize the throttle for when we switch over to liquid fuel. And we can start taking measurements. I'm not sure the exact uh, altitude, but the upper atmosphere, you know, certainly if you're above 20,000 meters, you're going to be in the upper atmosphere. So we can take some observations there as well. And then we'll take the remaining science experiments in and we'll save the uh, 
We'll save the materials bay until we get to outer space. And uh, and we'll do that science. Uh, we won't do that in the upper atmosphere. I think we'll get more science points if we if we keep that until we get uh, until we escape the atmosphere and get to seventy thousand meters. So, no further ado. I'm at 27,000 feet, so we can take a crew report, keep that experiment, mystery goo, keep that, temperature, keep that, actually, you know, we're going to spend an awful lot of time in space, so we're going to have tons of mission in space. So maybe we'll just observe this materials bay now. Before I forget, 22.5 science. Beautiful. So we'll keep that. Get a crew report. Yeah, that worked. Okay. So now we're just waiting. And... Uh, Based on the fact that we're still going over 500 meters per second, and we're almost at 70 now, we are going to be just fine. All right, there we go. So, escaped the atmosphere, completed that. Uh, stage destroyed. So this message I will explain. Uh, I'll explain in a moment. And then, of course, we got some more of the of the default world first. So that's good. So before I explain that, I just want to turn around here because I don't want to, I don't want this to take forever. So I'm going to actually stop our forward movement here. There we go. So now we're dropping and I will want to be pretty much horizontal here to take advantage of the drag that that will create to slow the ship down a bit. All right, so we were talking about this message right here. This is from Stage Recovery, which is a mod that I mentioned we had installed right from the get-go. That's the uh, that's the toolbar icon right there. And what happens is, if you put parachutes on your early stages that you drop as you uh, as you go through your staging in a mission. It can actually safely recover. It will simulate that it safely recovers those stages. Um, in this case, I didn't put any parachutes on our original uh, SRB stage. And so it uh, it's just saying here that that stage was destroyed. Now, now that we're doing um, some more missions where we're going to go suborbital and orbital, um, we'll actually start using stage recovery. Uh, because it's obviously it's going to save us funds where we're going to recover those parts and we're going to get funds back and so that's obviously going to make uh, each of our missions uh, less expensive because we're we're going to be able to reuse some parts but what we need to do and why 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 it's really more relevant for the for the suborbital and orbital missions is because you have to leave the um, you have to leave physics range, right? Uh, unless you have something like smart parts installed, where you can where you can have it deploy uh, parachutes, you know, after the stage is separated from your active vessel, which I don't have installed. I don't have smart parts or anything like that installed. 
Um, we have to leave. We have to leave physics range. Uh, just bear with me here, guys. I'm getting distracted because we are approaching the ground very quickly. And the drogue shoot was just what the doctor ordered. All right. We're not going to die after all, and Jump is going to live to see another mission. Pretty beautiful. Um, so what I was saying was, yeah, we need to uh, we need to leave the physics range in order for that uh, simulation to to occur. So if we would have tried to use stage recovery while we were just doing our missions right around the KSC there, uh, it wouldn't have it wouldn't have mattered um, because the parachutes, if we would have set them up to deploy as soon as we separated, then the chutes would have probably been destroyed because the stage was going too fast. And if we didn't set them up to deploy with the stage change, then of course what would happen is we wouldn't we never went far enough to escape physic range and therefore wouldn't have simulated that chute's deployment and it would have just crashed anyway. But uh, now we're going to be in a position to start using stage recovery and take advantage of, uh, of saving those funds. So I'm just going to time accelerate the last few hundred meters here. Alright, and because I am an idiot and I was so excited about getting into outer space, we never actually did those other experiments when we got above 70,000. So, uh, missed opportunity. We'll get them again on a future uh, a future flight for sure, but uh, it would have been nice to have those in addition to the 46.7 science we we did achieve. So I'm not being a uh, not being a very good uh, role model here in our in our Let's Play series. So let's have a look at R and D. We got 97.7. That means we can either get a couple of these guys at the 45 tier or we can advance to the one of the uh, one of the available options at the 90 science tier again space exploration I'm a big fan of opening up uh, additional science experiments early on miniaturization and it's also very nice to have a solar panel to be able to generate power rather than just store it. So there's a lot of choices to be made here. Um, flight control. Landing gets us uh, another heat shield. Uh, landing strut for, uh, you know, not for an airplane, but for a... Uh, for a planetary or or moon or minmus uh, vehicle, uh, nice landing strut there. Launch escape system, another parachute, and the small landing gear. Now the small landing gear is uh, is probably quite important for us to uh, to undertake. Our objective here of getting the uh, the aircrafts launched and, and doing a lot of exploration around Kerbin with uh, atmospheric flight, but none of that gives us as many options as the aerodynamics choice here. So let's research aerodynamics. Give us a lot more airplane parts. We won't be uh, constrained to uh, just a little Juno engine, although. Uh, for small light craft, that's a very capable engine. But uh, having unlocked aerodynamics, we now have access to the uh, to the turbofan. So, yeah, I think uh, happy with that choice. Maybe what we can do is, because um, we know the ship that we just built is uh, capable of getting us where we want to go in terms of escaping the atmosphere. Um, we could always just do a very easy re-execution of that same mission and recover the science which uh, I so carelessly neglected to recover in our last mission. 
but let's have another quick look at the uh, at the available contracts here. Another test on a suborbital haul to a suborbital orbit. Take some tourists safely to their destination. The decoupler. Yeah, there's some stuff we could do there. Um, but I think before I forget, I just want to re-execute that mission. My, uh, my OCD is going to get the best of me. So we want to uh, basically just launch this mission again. And uh, this time when we escape the atmosphere and get into space above 70,000 meters, we will uh, we'll actually get some science while we're up there. So, SAS, max throttle, and we are go. Once again, just try to turn over a little bit, just so that we don't come down on top of the KSC when we re-enter. We'll come down uh, in the water. that is going to be enough to carry us. Of course, I still have fuel left, so if it looks like we're going to come up a bit short, I'll just, uh, we'll just relight the engine and uh, push us back into, uh, back into space. And once again, you can see uh, stage destroyed. Our original SRB didn't have any parachutes on it. So we're slowing down and we're only at 60, so I think we're going to need to relight this and push us into the, into the 70,000 meter area. Alright. So. Crew report while in space near Kerbin. Beautiful thing. Let's look at our materials bay. Another 25. Beautiful. Mystery goo. For 10. Let's do another mystery goo. 10. And let's get a couple. Temperature readings, eight, eight, there we go. I think we're set. Of course, the other thing that hurt was not having a uh, science alert. Science alert is one of my favorite mods. Tremendously useful mod. However, the mod author uh, just hasn't had a chance to finish the update to to have it work with version 1.1 of KSP. So we, uh, as we anxiously wait for uh, for science alert to be updated, you can expect me to uh, to overlook. Uh, and forget some science opportunities as we did on the last uh, on the last launch but we've rectified that now we're going to bring this ship back get that science and see if that can help us uh, unlock anything else in the uh, in the research center so let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and time accelerate here Very 
careful as soon as I can deploy that drogue shoot. I'll need to. Yeah, very important. You can see we're under 2,000 meters before uh, we were able to deploy our main chute. So without that drogue shoot, we would have had a very bad day. distance record from the KSC of 32 kilometers. Wonderful. All right, another 51 science. Super. All right, back into the, uh, the R&D center. We've got 60, so not enough to, uh, to get the landing. We need another 30 could go back for flight control. Just not sure. Not sure if I'd rather open up flight control because it is nice to have the inline reaction wheel. Um, or save up. I think I'm going to save up for the for the landing tier um, because again that uh, that small landing gear is uh, is a little more robust than uh, than what we get with these LY01 and LY05. Uh, probably important for uh, for our aircraft plans that we have. So I'm gonna save that. Now we're finally ready to start building our first aircraft and run it through some flight tests. This is gonna be a particularly dangerous time in our KSP career because to be honest, I am not the best airplane pilot. We may even want to recruit a new Kerbal for this so we don't lose Jeb or, uh, or Valentina. We'll see. And of course, once we have a design that we're happy with, then we can start our journey around Kerbin and, uh, and start taking in some cool sights here on the planet. So, I think this is probably the best time to wrap up this episode, guys. Uh, get ready for some airplane hijinks in our next episode, and we'll see you soon. Take care.